Hello and welcome to another interesting episode of The Magnet. You know, The Magnet will bring to you eminent and interesting business personalities who have diverse experience. On today's episode, we'll be taking you through another business angle. And what is this angle? Renewable energy. What does it take to renew energy? A lot of people think at home that, well, maybe the power supply is not enough and they need something to help them with. We get generator set, we get solar panel to help us at home. What does renewable energy mean? I'm an expert in the house who will be expatiating on this topic. Who is he? Let's find out. Ayodeji Ismail Adepoju hails from Ileife in Oshun State. Born to Mr. and Mrs. Adedoye Adepoju, he spent his early life in Ileife, Oshun State, Ogbomosho in Oyo State, and Ikire, Oshun State. His elementary school was at Ogbomosho and Ikire. He attended Ebenezer Baptist Primary School, Ogbomosho, Oyo State. NUD Primary School, Ikire, Oshun State. Fatima College, Ikire, Oshun State. His tertiary education was at the Polytechnic Ibadan, Oyo State, where he studied computer science. His working career started from International Cards, Oluyole Estate, Ibadan. Oyo State. Later proceeded to DPMS, Obalinde, Lagos, Saipem Contracting, Lagos, Saipem Contracting, Port Harcourt, River State, and Intel's Nigeria Limited, Port Harcourt. His last place of paid employment before he established First Option Support Service in 2002, where he is the pioneer MD and CEO till date. He started with information technology in Port Harcourt and later diversified into renewable energy services. His local and international training and participation in foreign exhibition has added value to his service delivery. First Option under the leadership of Ayodeji Ismail Adekpoju is a member of the Nigerian German Chamber of Commerce, Nigerian Belgian Chamber of Commerce, Renewable Energy Association of Nigeria, the Council for Renewable Energy Nigeria. He is married to Ganyat Akinyemi of Iwola Fishagba House, Bako Igwora. Welcome back. With me here in the studio now is Mr. Yode Jadipweju, the MD and CEO of First Option Services. Thank you very much for obliging our call, sir. Nice to be here. So, so as an expert in uh, renewable energy, like what does renewable energy mean? If you look at the name itself, mm -hmm. renew, something that you can continuously renew, mm -hmm. that shouldn't be exhaustible. Even human beings, they will say you should renew your faith, you should renew your energy, you should renew your knowledge. So the same thing goes with energy. We want to look into a fold of energy that you can renew that you should not be able to exhaust. Oh, okay. If you look at fossil fuel, or you look at your crude oil, you can tell you a country has a five billion barrels of oil underneath. Are we saying it cannot finish? It can. Definitely can't. can be finished. So, but we have some energy sources that as long as the earth continue to exist, they will not finish. And one of them is energy from the sun, mm -hmm. energy from the wind, thermal energy and coal. So we want to, we, we specialize on energy that you can renew, oh, okay. that That's should not finish. And when you put that as your point of attention, it will take your mind off looking at what you can finish. And right, that's looking at the full state, the full and Exactly. So what renewable energy means basically is energy that you could keep using over and over, over and, and over and over again. And it's renewed. So what are the various type of energy? Because now we've talked about renewable energy, you're trying to, that means there's renewable energy, there's non-renewable energy. Exactly. And when we're talking about non-renewable energy, you're talking about fuel, and then renewable energy, talk about maybe air, maybe sun. So what are the various type of energies? Okay, let's start from the closest to, to us. You get energy from your petrol generator, or you get energy from your diesel generator. Okay. Even your automobile, your vehicle you put on the road, create his own energy yes, using diesel or petrol. This is a way of energy. You also have energy from tama, heat. You have even energy from the wood you burn in the house. Oh. Also, when you put your solar water heater, you are creating an energy. So when we now look broadly about all forms of energy, as you said earlier on, we can break them into two energy that you can exhaust okay. and energy you can continuously Renew. renew. Renewable energy. So in two folds, we can broadly classify them as destructive energy oh. and non-destructive energy. energy. If okay. you put 
five liters of petrol into your generator, you are generating power for self-consumption. When that petrol runs out, nice. your generator goes off. Yeah. If you are connected to sun, which is a, a form of renewable energy also, when the sun goes down, you lose power. Uh -huh. But that's where you now have, how do you extend such, such energy? energy? And yeah. some accessories now need to come up. So to cut it short, renewable energy, we know thermal, hydro, solar, wind, non-renewable, petrol, diesel, and also, there is an energy that we have forgotten about. <laughs> Someone that is cooking the house using wood is also creating an energy. energy. Oh. Such energy is supposed to be renewable. Supposed to be renewable. Sometimes it isn't. Yes, if we are doing the right thing. Right. Oh, okay. As we are falling the trees, are you planting more? Huh. Deforestation. That, exactly. And if you tackle another energy from coal. You keep extracting coal from the ground to run your train, to generate electricity, but definitely coal deposits will finish. Even if it doesn't finish, you must have dig, 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 and you create a mass of holes around the country. Around the world. So let's put it that way that energies are renewable and non-renewable. Yeah, thank you very much. I was watching one documentary earlier on, video of a lady. What she does was to get decomposed animal waste product and then she used it to make a gas. I don't know what kind of gas that is to cook in the kitchen. So do you think, how true is it that we can convert animal waste into energy? Animal wastes fall into category of renewable energy. Renewable energy, oh. As long as you keep rearing animals, you continue to have their waste. waste. Even human beings, as long as you continue to live, you pass waste. So these waste that come out from animal mm -hmm. end up called what we call sink gas. Oh. That's the global uh, terminology. Yeah. So and when you now look at what do you get from sink gas, one element is methane. Oh, okay. And from methane, you can then generate electricity. You can also generate heat. Hmm. So which means if we have a control ways of keeping our animals, their waste should be should. productive. They shouldn't be destructive. Oh. And also the animal also should not be destructive. Hmm. So let's take it beyond the animal we see. Even the poultry droppings, you can get methane from them. The one from cow, sheep, all sorts of animal waste, you can utilize them to generate electricity through some processes that gives you methane. So, oh, yeah. And when you have methane, you pass it to generate heat, and you can also use it to turn uh, electricity turbine. Normal human beings who are little do not have the technologi uh, technological know-how. How easy is it for them to create this renewable your, energy? Your own energy. I said earlier on, you gather your charcoal uh -huh. or um, your wood and you light it you are generating a source of energy. energy you want the heat to boil the water so you have generated energy but energy generation in domestic application oh. should be tailored to what you know is abundant within your area uh -huh. if I live in a farm and I have tons of haze, or I plant rice. I have the paddy, the shafts of rice. What do I do with them? Huh. If you go back to India, for example, the governments were trying to tackle the farmers because at the end of the planting season, they have a lot of haze from the rice farm. What do they do with it? They burn it. Hmm. It causes pollution, leads to global warming. So now a company now said, rather than burning it, be bringing it to our industry, we'll be buying it from you, and we'll use it to generate electricity. Energy. So to answer it in an itemized order in your house, you are generating energy by even lighting your gas. That generates energy. But what do you do with that with energy? energy? How easy it is. 
Start from the lowest. Putting a solar panel in your house to generate as little as 50 watts of electricity can do something in your house, huh. even if it is to charge your mobile phone. You can gradually move to energy sufficiency within your own capacity. Because the first thing to look at is not the monetary value, but what do I have? What can I tap into? <laughs> You're talking about not looking at it. I, want, I wanted to ask that question, like how effective will, will, will that be in terms of cost? And you say you should not look at the monetary value. Yes. But on a normal day, if I'm going to get a fall for maybe a thousand naira, I know that fall is going to last me all through the night if there's power outage. Can you compare the cost effectiveness to that of solar in terms of getting solar panel? Because any solar panel might be quite expensive, especially for the, the low, low income earners in this part of the country. It might be quite expensive, and then you think uh, getting flow is actually cheaper. Do you know where we get it wrong? Where, sir? Okay. Nigeria as a nation and the citizenry, we have large tastes. <laughs> we have large tastes. You see a student now, you ask him, do you need electricity? You say yes. To run what? He's a student. He can tell you to run air conditioner. Is that the <laughs> first thing you need to look at? No. But the weather is so hot. And you can't go, you, can, you can't blame anybody. Like, the weather is very, very hot. Especially, I like, don't know, at this time, at this period, it's very, very hot. So AC, is like, air conditioner is quite very important. That is why in another topic of discussion, we we'll definitely go into house itself, hmm. environment itself. How do you build your houses? Which is another day topic. topic. But let's look at the affordability of generating electricity through renewable Renegade. means. The first thing you need to look into is your equipment. Make your equipment energy friendly, uh -huh. energy efficient. We have what we call ER, energy efficient ratio, in which we just buy equipment. Some people scrap equipment in Western countries because they consume a lot of electricity. Can you imagine that your mobile phone will be powered with a mega five volt? Wow. So, if you need to generate electricity for educational purposes for a student, which equipment do you have? Will you go for a desktop or you go for a laptop? Is it a desktop that would, gen that would consume 250 watts or a laptop that would take 65 watts? Hmm. Or even we have a laptop that would take as little as 30 watts. Or you use your mobile phone, you get a dock that can turn it into a display. So you dock your phone, it turns it into a display. Then you get maybe the smallest battery you can think of, maybe five amps, and a small solar panel of about 50 watts. You put them together. As long as the sun is shining, you are generating electricity. Now, if you spend about 30,000 naira okay. to achieve this. Can you quantify the convenience you have in sitting within your own kingdom hmm. and you are running your assignment? Okay. So that is why I said, look at our equipment. When your equipment is right, affordability will be good. How well will you say the government has fed in the country, in this country, Nigeria, in terms of providing basic electricity needs? Yeah, it's good to appreciate ourselves. Yeah. They have tried, okay. but they have not tried very well. Mm. Our energy footprint is pretty bad. bad. When you look at the whole world, although Nigeria is not among the 10 countries that we can even say they do not have electricity. <laughs> but some 10. Like charge, in which you'll be talking about less than 5% of the citizenry having access to electricity. Oh. Nigeria is a nation of 200 million, yeah. so to say. What is our installed capacity? What is the size of the working capacity? Both operational and non-operational facility, energy asset we have in Nigeria can give us about 12 gigawatts. But out of these 12 gigawatts, what is the productive energy we have? At times we say it's four. Oh. At times we say it has risen to 
at times we say it has gotten to five. But let us look at countries in the same category of population as Nigeria. Pakistan, Russia, uh, Brazil. Next on the line in population, we talk of Egypt. I'm picking them based on the size, similarity in similar size of size. population. So let's look at a country like Egypt, which is about 80 million. Okay. Today, I think Egypt is in the threshold of 65 gigawatts of electricity. Wow. While Nigeria is at 12 in store capacity, four to five operational. Thank you very, very much, sir. It's been an enlightening time with you here in the city. We'll begin on a quick break now. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is still the magnet. And before we went on that break, I've been in the studio with Mr. Ayodeji Adepoju. And we'll be talking about renewable energy. He's the MD and CEO of Fixed Option Support Service. Thank you very much for sitting with us, Stan. Yes, we're back. And yeah, thank you so again. Before we went on that break, we we're talking about renewable energy and how, how has the government helped uh, in, the make, in making sure that uh, basic electricity amenities or basic electricity um, needs of people are met. There is this assertion that most of the small-scale businesses we have in Nigeria, most, the reason why they do not succeed is because uh, the energy, the power supply is bad, and so, and a lot of people, a lot of these businesses thrive on power supply. So what the, what's your take on the assertion? Let's put it in the category of access to energy. Mm. How accessible is this energy for various applications? Yes, the government is trying in that aspect in the last uh, four or five years. We've had different programs targeting how to make electricity accessible. accessible. But the first thing we need to look at about energy access is as a small scale business owner or is even as a large scale business, business owner. owner. So let's look at the small scale business owner. We are very reluctant in moving. There is no crime about you setting up your business where you know energy access is available. <laughs> In this country? Yes, and that is why we will encourage governments, big companies, individuals to look into what we call energy hub or electricity hub. When this is available, maybe it's like four plots of land, you have electricity generation there. So a blacksmith that requires electricity can set up his business yes, there. Yes. Mechanical workshop can go there and set up his business there. Let us look at what we have to tackle what we do not have. It's difficult today that everybody will be self-sufficient in energy generation. It's difficult. But it's not impossible that government can help us. But the first thing we need to do as a student, as a small scale owner is Look for where the energy is. is. Move towards it. It won't be hard for you to say that. You see students sitting around ATM kiosk in the night yes. to do readings and do the assignments. That is where electricity is. When he passes the exam, he has forgotten where he got the electricity from. In fact, we have enough, we have a lot, and then we still do not have. It's not getting to the people that need this electricity. I think that's the major issue when it comes to the government and when it comes to small-scale business. I, I might, I might, you might uh, tend to, uh, to correct me if that assertion is wrong. The approach of taking this to is, first of all, solve your problem in available means mm -hmm. before you look at what should be the norms. Mm -hmm. For a student, for a small-scale business owner, solve your problem first. first. Then, when your business starts thriving, you then look at how can I get this energy that I need? Mm -hmm. And how do you do it? The first thing is, as a business owner, make sure that you have the right approach. Sure. You have the right equipment. You look at the right energy assets you can capitalize on. Look at some markets that were energized about two years ago. If you know that you cannot self-generate then you have to be a consumer. Wow. And that is why we say self-generation, self-consumption. Here in this studio, we generate electricity ourselves. Mm -hmm. 
this yeah. media house generates electricity on its own. If electricity is available from the government, they will take it. But what do we need to do as an individual? We need to create. We need to be creative. Mm -hmm. And that is why we now look at the sustainable approach. Solar, wind. It's difficult for you to be in your house and tap into wind because you may not be able to, to have that asset. So in a brief, let us look at what is very av available, available to us, to us to and we tap into it. Thinking about um, the renewable energy, a lot of people, uh, we've been hearing about global warming. How safe are renewable energy? Like how safe are they for human, human consumption? Safety goes with standard, hmm. and standard goes with quality. Among various renewable energy we have, which you can say thermal, nuclear, hydro, the safest, but it sounds scary to a lot of people, no, apart from the nuclear plants, happen to be the safest. Wow. Yes. Because when you look at the history, what is the rate of death via nuclear? nuclear. But when you look at hydro, is the corporate. Recently, a glacier moved, busted the bank of maybe one or two dams in India, and we lost about 140 people. Yeah, lives wow. during the bust. And it's not new in the old world. We have several dams busting their, dam, uh, their bank. But when you look at nuclear, even the Chinobi, what is the death rate? We know a large amount of land was rendered useless for a very long time but the death rate is lower. And let's look at another one, solar. How safe is the solar plant? Before, people tend to say, don't site your building close to the solar plant. Solar plant. But today we have seen that there is no problem. Even when you have solar, you can do a lot of things. Under it, you can rear your animal, you can have a greenhouse, so it's very safe. So when you look at the hierarchy of safety, we give it to nuclear, very safe. The common one among us is coal, okay. which is very dangerous. We have the fumes, it gives you asthma, it gives you some lungs issues, so they are not very safe. But they are still form of energy in the, in the, in the world that everybody wants to tap into. I mean, many countries because they have the coal, coal depots. Thank you very much, sir. So what makes your organization the first option in the provision of energy to the populace? Yeah, first option, our advantage. Hmm. We are local. So we tend to study people's need. We understand the environment. We know what people require. Thank you very much. So um, finally, to wrap it up, what advice would you give youths and everybody who is watching, who is, who is open, who wants to find a way to manage this power that is not enough? Everybody complains there's no light, there's no light, it is much. What advice would you give? So we talk about youths, and you can't talk without referring to students and artisans. The first thing we need to do is learn. Mm -hmm. No matter what businesses you need, tap into a little knowledge about renewable mm -hmm. energy. So that is education. The next we advise you to do is understand your environment so that you know the type of electricity that will be of need to you. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, don't let us limit ourselves that once our acronym, they've taken light, uh -huh. <laughs> then you stop working. Work. In our company, we are trying to push an idea we call give a what. What do we mean by give a what? If in my house I could generate 2,000 watts of electricity, and to my right there is a student, to my left there is a trader, can I give the student one bulb to power? to give light, and can I give the trader by my side one socket to recharge her phone or his phone? That's why we say, give a watt, donate a watt. So those who have, should have that agenda. Mm. If you live in an environment in which five people have self generation of electricity, and each of them donates a watt, you will see the way we'll be eradicating and erasing the darkness. Yes, and that's why we also say that turn on the lights. Huh. 
and turn off the darkness. Thank you very, very much. It's been an enlightening time with you here in the studio, and we are very, very grateful for having you here with us, sir. Thank you very, very much for coming. Thank you for having me. This is all we joined the cut into the end of today's episode of the program. I'm very sure you've learned one or two things when it comes to renewable energy. Do not forget to make use of what you've learned on the magnet today. I don't forget that this is my lovely outfit was made by Adele Fashion Inspire. Please call the number on your screen or visit his Instagram page at Adele Fashion Inspire. Also follow us on our website at www.amesmedia.com.ng and follow us on our IG and Facebook at The Magnet TV. Till we meet next week, I am Ibrahim Olaguju. Bye for now.